Hello people, this is Courtney Winston, as always, as always. Oh man, let me start this again because I want to put the time. You know what, your hair ace, your hair, your hair, brother. I was just going to put the title on so people know what it is, but people know what it is, bruv. Welcome everyone, welcome those jumping in onto the Black Car Speakers Lounge. Weekly here every Sunday with a lot more to come. We have a very special guest, very special friend of mine, AC Rulia. We're going to bring him on. We're going to bring him on right now and we're going to talk about his career and many things that the brother's been going through his plight and success so everyone jump in jump in i want to keep it nice and sweet so uh let me get my brother in as i bring him in hoping your week's been good everyone's had a good week the is raining Great, I thought you. No, 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 no. We're consistent like that. We're consistent, Sam's World. The weather raining outside. But, as my mum would say, water is a blessing. Good to have you. Good to have you all. People, jump in. We're going to be posting. This will be, and I'll speak as if we're on YouTube right now. Hope you've all had a great week. Let's bring in my very special guest and friend, as we always do. And... Let's get this thing popping, yeah? Three or four people can jump in. So, introducing none other than Ace, 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 Ace. <laughs> Long time, bro. I know. Long bro. time, brother. <laughs> Long time, bro. I know, bro. I know, I know, I know, I know. Long wow. time. Long time. Where, Long time. Long time. When last, when last did I see you, like physically? When last did I see you, bro? I'm sure it might have been at the the watching for Tarzan. I'm sure that was probably yeah. the last time I saw you. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. That was a minute. 2016. Yeah, no, 2016. Yeah, yeah. 2016. No, yeah. could have been that long ago. Yeah, no. Yeah, that long, yeah. Yeah. You're looking good though, bro. <laughs> safe, bro. Safe. You're looking well, man. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with you. You know, I see you working out and doing things. You're home. Um, yeah, come on, man. You have to... How's the, the family? How's, how's the little ones? How's everyone, man? Yeah, yeah, everyone's good, man. Everyone's well, man. They breathe in their yeah. life. They're blessed. So, you know, I can't, I can never complain, you know? Never we complain. We have to give thanks, innit? We have to give thanks, man. So, thanks brother, we're going to get straight into it. Please tell the people who you are. You're an actor, you're a stuntman, you're multi talented, you're a motivational speaker, coach. Tell the people <laughs> then who you are and what you do. So, everyone that that, that doesn't know me. My name's Ace Ruel, and um, I, I would say I'm two two main things. One, I'm a performer. So a performer in a sense that I perform as an actor. I perform a lot in relation to motion capture and creature acting. So, you know, when you see stuff like Legend of Tarzan, Planets of the Apes and stuff, I do, I do a lot of those type of acting. So it's creature with motion capture. As well yeah, as doing uh, that, and, and another thing that people may know me for is I do a lot of public talks, a lot of speaks in schools and, you know, I talk about in schools, in youth clubs, with judges, with Met Police, with businesses, depending on the criteria, in, in the department of psychology, you know, transitioning your psych psychology and transmuting Pacific energy into one field, into another field. So mm -hmm. they're the main two things, you know, like I don't really like to be like, yo, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm this, I'm that. I'm just a creative that loves to perform and inform, you know, that's, yes. that's me. I like to create, I like to perform and inform, you know. Yes, and sir. Ace, Ace, Ace is for actor, C is for creative, and E is for educator. That's, that's just me. I and like that. Say that again, bro. Say that again. Ace for actor, A for C for creative. Go ahead. A for actor, C for creative, and E for educator. That's, that, that's uh -huh. me. Nice. Great shot. I like that. I like that. I like that. So, brother, tell us just quickly the couple, the movies that you. Okay, so you are a motion capture. That's a bit like for those that don't know, Andy Serkis, aka Gollum, Smeagol's Lord of the Rings. Um, he puts on these. Uh, brother knows the technical. To, I don't even the seat. Basically, these suits which capture your motion. And you know, funny enough, I was just watching something on the Netflix where it's got a whole host of these different films, short films animation a lot of it is motion capture so yeah. brother tell us a little bit how motion capture works and then we're going to get into some of the other stuff sir so just going off by what you said motion capture is basically when you're capturing someone's motion and the, the way that you do it is by you put on a particular suit 
there's two types. I'll, I'll quickly explain the two. One, the main one that most people use are in studios. So you go to a big studio and what they do is put you in a suit. They put markers on you. These markers have a reflective ball on them. And when you're in the mm-hmm. studio, there's cameras all around you. That's infrared. The infrared yeah. shines onto the reflective markers. It shines back into the cameras and then it feeds right. into the computer. And that's how you get, that's how you create the motion capture. So you basically can capture anything from props to animals to humans, anything that can have markers put on them. So, you, nice. so that's the, and then you have the other motion capture where it's, it's, it's a suit that doesn't require you to be in a studio. So you can do it anywhere around. And that's all through Bluetooth. That's through Bluetooth and wireless. Wow. Tell us yeah. more about that. That's interesting. Tell us a little bit more about that. For those, Motion capture, basically, again, Tarzan, yes. Lord of the Rings, Planet yeah. of the Apes. Or, or the films, the films that, that are associated with motion capture that most that people would know is Planet of the Apes. When you look at Avengers and you see Iron Man, Spider Man, the recent ones, where they stopped using costumes. Iron Man, Spider Man, Thor. Right. Uh, not Thor, they I don't mean. They use their actual of, costumes. They actually that, don't wear it. Yeah, yeah. They, they used to back in the day, but now it's because of how, you know, the suits might wear and tear and how long and how hot it might get. But it's all motion capture. And then one of the biggest films was all motion capture, which was Avatar. That yes. Was, uh, yes. Avatar and Planets of the Apes are the film that, that really pushed forth the focus of motion capture. It used to Come be on. something that, that science used to use, scientists used to use for the body. And yes, then it draws its way into video games. So all the video games that people play, most of it is done by motion capture. It's all, uh, it's, uh, yeah, every game is probably done by motion capture. That is that requires a human character to play in it. So, so yeah. has it made it easy for productions to turn over to turn uh, 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 to produce movies like whereas before back in the day you'd have you know like Sinbad and all yeah. them movies like King Kong from back in the thirties, or or with them old old movies like the old version of Godzilla, and they used to literally yeah. use motion capture, where it's bit by bit, by, bit by bit, like yeah. Clash of the Titans. But now, yeah. is it a bit more easier to produce yeah. high level what, movies? What it does is it helps to create realistic movement as mm. much as possible, and gives. So basically, yes, it it. It could all be done without motion capture because it could all be animation. You know, it could all be hand, hand animation. But when you have somebody that is capable of creating the realness, the weight, the movement and, and the uniqueness that in those movements, that it helps to, it helps the animators to get maybe 30% more of their work done. Or if it's a human, 50 to 60, 70%. You know, so most no, we, we, we still work. We still work because I'm still I'm seeing some stuff, brother. And it's like rah, it's been yeah. motion catching. Am I? I'm thinking, are we gonna be employed? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. now they, they they definitely no, they definitely still be employing us because you know it's the realism. Do you understand? Come because on. they could have done. They've been doing stuff without motion capture before, but motion capture just helps to create the realness of a character. You know, right. it gives it the life. It gives it gives animation life. You know, depending on what type of character it is that people mm-hmm. are playing, and especially for video games, it's heavily required. That's where most of the motion capture is, is in video games. Yeah, I worked on a video game where a voice for the dude that was doing the motion capture, man, and I was like, yeah. wow, that's, that's another level because you're speaking with your whole body, your whole physicality. So I'm very interested in this Bluetooth thing. Is that something one can do at home, like motion yeah. capture? Yeah, yeah. Your okay. phone. So not Bluetooth. Sorry, it's a suit that oh, they have, and you have to get you have to get the software. But it works. It's a wireless one, so it works via um, the Wi-Fi router that it has that comes with the system. So I could right. get a suit now. I could do it anywhere, and it gives you. It, depending on how much you spend, depends. You know how it goes. The more you spend, the yeah. better you get. You know, Come like on. the highest range suit is like. 11,000 and the lowest rage suit is like 3,000, you know, but it, wow. it, so it's more, it's more for the indie, indie, indie group, you know, yeah. the people that may not have the biggest, biggest budget to have a proper studio because a proper studio will cost you at least about 50 to 100 grand to have a proper studio, a, a yeah. minimum, a, a mini stu- 
studio with the cameras. The studio you know? as well, you know? yeah. All the cameras all around you and all that, yeah. Yeah, and and that would be like about maybe like five to ten cameras. You know, Jeez. like a proper proper studio has about sixty to eighty cameras at least, you know, wow. and a proper studio proper studio costs at least at least five hundred thousand, maybe three to five hundred thousand. Yeah, for a proper uh, proper studio. Yeah, yeah. That's and good. That's camera. good. That's good. I, I can think. I can hear people thinking, say, "Let me do a go fund me so I can get a studio and do something like that." <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. So, brother, well, let's get into the crux of things, brother. Um, I saw an Evening Standard. I believe that's the right tabloid. And brother, we've been speaking about this for some time about in terms of the deportation of what is taking place with a lot of those of us who are from the West Indies via our mothers and fathers, but were born here. Ace is born in this country, people. I want everyone to hear this story. Ace is born in the UK. He's a UK citizen, British passport, everything. Just like myself, my parents were born in the Caribbean, Jamaica. I was born here, West London. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to South London, though. So, Ace, tell us a little bit about what you've been going through, brother. I mean, we're going to celebrate your career, what's yeah, coming yeah. for you. We speak goodness over your, over your life and over your career, brother. So, but we, let's just touch on some of the stuff that you've had to go through, my king, regarding yeah. the media or, or uh, the home office. Tell us what's yeah. going on with that, brother. So, basically, I, so as you said, I was born and grown here. But mm. one of the things that I never got, like you may have had, I never got my British passport. But oh, okay. So what happened is, okay, just cut along. I try wrap it up real quick. So I was born and grown here. As my mum came here, gave birth to me here. You know, I grew up. Blah blah blah. So I didn't know that I was in British. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I just thought, okay, cool. You know, I had a Jamaican passport. I had a Jamaican passport to travel to Jamaica. But, but you, you was born here, though. Yeah, yeah, born, yeah, born, growing here, birth, born, British birth certificate, everything. So, mm. but I just thought I was just one of those cool kids that had a Jamaican passport, you know, like you know what, what, I, what, I got a Jamaican one. I didn't know there was a, I didn't know, you know, having yeah. a British pa passport makes a difference to the Jamaican. I just thought maybe because my parents were from there, that's why right, I got it, right. and I thought it was a cool thing. So, mm. cut a long story short, when I got in trouble with the police and I and I went to prison, I got sentenced to eight years and I served four and a half years. Mm. Halfway through my halfway through my prison sentence, I got a letter and the letter, you know, telling me about, you know, being deported to, to Jamaica. So in my mind I'm like, huh, what? what what are you talking about? Like I had what do you mean being deported? Because remember again, in my mind, I'm mm. born here and I'm grown here. I don't know I don't, leave, I don't you have legal status, yeah. Yeah. So I don't I don't obviously I'm Jamaican like by my blood and my family, but obviously by, if you're talking about legal status, I thought I was British, you know, because I thought if you were born in a country, but what I found that is if you're born here after 1983 and your parents, none of your parents are British, then you're automatically a nationality of your parents. So really? I, I didn't know about this law. Yeah, I didn't know about this law. So Jeez. most people don't know about that law. So I didn't know that because, you know, fun enough, me and you, we go back and forth, brother, in terms of we like to deep certain knowledge and all that. And I was reading into the admiralty law or, or my time law, you know, the law yeah. of the sea. And um, one documentary I was watching was saying that if you're born, for example, on a Dutch boat off the coast of England, where England has jurisdiction, for example, then you are immediately seen as a British citizen, you know? But, but yeah. what you just said to me there, man, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that, man. Matt. So that happened, and then mm -hmm. they tried to deport me with, with, with obviously going through the courts and everything like that. And I won all my I won all my deportation cases. So when I came out in 2012, my last hearing was 2013. And I'm going to say these numbers because I want you to remember the dates. So I came out of prison in, two, came out of yeah. prison in 2012, and mm -hmm. my last deportation hearing was 2013. But right. I won because obviously all the judges said, you know, he's born and grown here. He, you know, he learned crime from being here. He didn't know it from anywhere else. Right. But two and a half years later, after my deportation case is finished, home officers come back to me again, talking about they want to revoke my indefinite leave and put me on temporary leave. So again, in my mind, I'm like, why? Like, I've been out now. 
remember it's 2015 I've been mm. out now three and a half years so I've been out three and a half years I ain't caused no problems you know my children mm. my partner you got children as well you got children yeah at that time I had two kids at that time I had two so my children my me working everything you know doing work with the yeah. charity hackney council brent council doing work with them with the youth yeah. and all of that stuff so in my mind i'm like yo why why are they coming at me again i'm confused so yeah. i go to court now go to court in 2016 june so now i'm i'm out of prison i finished my license everything now i'm i'm i'm, I'm completely Reform. free of everything so i go to court now and the judge turned around and said I commend you. I'm going to say it short. I commend you. You've changed your life around. Because he, he got all the documents. He got the documents of my children's birth certificate, my, the work I'd done. Remember these times I'd done Tarzan, you know, yes. uh, Tarzan, all the other stuff that you I'd done. In the industry, you work with people. Yeah, in the industry, yeah. got reference letters from my probation officer to, you know, <clears throat> charity owners, everything. And the guy yes, said, sir. you know, you've changed your life around. Come on, brother. Boom. Now, this, mm -hmm. this is where it, everything starts going flimsy. So the home oh. office is filled again. And then I go to the second court. And when I go to the second court, the judge basically disallowed my appeal and said it was off the basis that I never provided proof of evidence of work and that, oh. I, had, yeah, and that I had a long way to go to prove that I wasn't a threat to... Uh, if, 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 have I got the paperwork here in my hand? I'd so like people, I want people to keep this in mind. Ace is so an actor, it's, yeah? It's yeah, not so a he, man which is going to be behind the, the warehouse. With all due respect to anyone who works in warehouse, I'm not disrespecting warehouse workers. I'm saying he's very visible. <laughs> he's in the spotlight. And this yeah. judge said yeah. that, that you I, have no record or evidence of what... Go ahead, Karen, brother. Yeah, Sorry. so he basically... So um, obviously... So he said, I had, no, I had no proof of evidence of work. I didn't prove, provide proof of evidence of work. I claimed to have family ties with my one son. Remember, these times I had two kids and the both birth certificates were there. He said, I claimed to have ties with my, my son, but I didn't provide an evidence, even though the Home Office gave me enough time. What do you mean? Like, but the last judge said I provided all the evidence. And then he said that because I made a reference to racial conspiracy you know like when the home office tried to get at you you need to write them a letter and explain to them why they shouldn't try and trouble you and i put everything down and obviously my mom my mom's very like pro-black you know so she wrote yeah. she been part of it and said yo this is a racial conspiracy like why two two and a half years you leave him alone and then you come back for him like he's not committing no offense and then the judge said because i mentioned that in my letter therefore i have not come to terms and i've not come to terms with my sentence and taken and accepted the, my crime and therefore i might you know i might i i i might reoffend he also said i i had financial incentives to reoffend so what my thing was for me how did you know that how did you know that, that how did you know cause, cause, because because he's saying that i never bought the paperwork, like here it is, here, look, I, I just want to, I'm, I'm yeah. on this, uh, my court paper, so this is what the judge said, that Pallant had n made no significant effort to find suitable employment and therefore he had a financial incentive to further offend. But remember, the last judge said, I provided this evidence. Remember the last judge said, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I, can, read the, I can read the other one, but I remember he said, all the documents that I provided went unchallenged at the hearing. That means the Home Office never challenged any of my documents. But this judge is saying something else. And then he said, yeah, yeah, I had a long way to go to prove that he was not a threat to society given the seriousness of his previous offence. But I've been out of prison for four and a half years, off licence, worked with the London Mayor's Office and everything, schools and all of that to, to help, you know, the youth them to understand what, you know, one lifestyle to another lifestyle. Yeah. So how long do you have to be out for? 20 years before I, I prove that I'm not serious? And then again, mm -hmm. the Secretary of State alleged that the appellate had not supplied evidence, that the appellate had not supplied evidence of the family life he came to develop with his son, who was born on the 9th of October 2013. My son was born on the 11th of October 2014. 
So I don't know how you got the dates wrong when there's birth certificates that was given. Did you, as somebody else, man. Did you understand? So he said, the, despite having a number of opportunities to do so, what do you mean? I gave everything. And then the last one, rather than address his offending, the appellant made a number of allegations against the respondent, a, a racial conspiracy against black males. This undermines any suggestion that the appellant had come to terms with his offending and was taking steps to ensure he did not occur again. Huh? What? So that how? You know? So for me, it was for me it was okay. Did did the courts lose my paperwork, or was the judge racist? Because it has to be one of the two. That's some serious racism and gross negligence right there, brother. You serious gross like, negligence. You know, and malpractice. And yeah. so because of that, because of that, I lost that that hearing. And then when I tried to appeal, I never got any of my appeals. So what that then made me do, I had, now I'm put on basically limited leaves. So I've got to pay every 30 months to obviously remain in the country. Now, so what kind well, of... Well, of course, you've got to pay. Yeah, I've got to pay to, for the limited leaves like two the application is like two grand and up two grand four hundred basically to to pay to obviously remain in the country but what makes things even worse is that i don't have jamaican citizenship jamaica has already said that they don't recognize me as a citizen so technically i'm stateless and therefore home office would never would never have been able to deport me or remove me from the country to jamaica because right. jamaica won't accept me so technically i'm paying the two and a half just to be able to work. Because if I don't pay it, they can do some BS and probably put me in a detention center for a while, but they have to release me. But what that means is I can't work. Do you understand what I'm saying? So technically, I'm only paying this so I can be able to work. You understand? So this is, and obviously my case has been going on for so like however long. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, so two, yeah, two and a half tax for now, because when it goes up, it seems to go up like every time. Almost every year, I feel like it, it, it goes up because it works. Yeah. So basically, obviously, you know, someone heard about new one of my friends has always tried to push my story and then he got it to the right woman, which I'm very grateful for. And she put in it independent and then you know it just yeah. it just it went all over the place. Yeah, and then yeah, it just went all over the place and that's how it surfaced. So obviously the title says facing deportation. Deportation slash removal is basically the same type of thing. It's like if I don't, if they refuse me to give me my application in August, then obviously it can mean that they can try some BS. But yeah, that's that's basically the the the, the short version of the whole story. Yeah. So people and people are saying here, disgusting. Sounds well said. It's disgusting. What's happening to you, bro? Uh, all the same time. Oh trying to uh, fleece and oppress at the same time. People are just coming in with their comments, bruv. You know what? And remember, you know what, people? England, United Kingdom, this is the same country that says we must do away with knife crime. We must do away with street crime. We must do away with violence. We, we must help the young people. Here is this young man here, who I know personally, who has and is helping young people, is helping himself, is a family man, is a role model, is very visible, and is mentored, and is working with many different establishments and institutions, but yet the government, or I'll call them, and I'm saying this, this is not a, I saying it, the mafia government, they want to deport Ace away from the UK, a place in which he was born, a place in which he has proved on the record that he can help many young people and has helped many young people. And has not reoffended at all. Look at that, people. This, yeah. this, we're meant to be in a country whereby, oh, we care, and um, you know, we, we want to do be very diverse and inclusive. Of course, Mum's gonna say this is a racist, racially motivated uh, hearing, and then the two judges have conflict of of judgment as well. So that's negligence and malpractice right there. So, brother, what do we do? What do we need to do as a collective, as a community of actors, creatives, and as uh, uh, just people, you know, to make sure that you get justice, brother? Do you know and it is, like... And, and to get it in every single media platform possible. Do you know it so, is, like... Yeah, like, the, the, 
that realistically, you know, like a lot of people have, you know, reshared like the story and and everything. And to be fair, that's probably the most what people can do, you know, because it's it's it really comes down to somebody seeing it and stepping in and being like, you know, now nah, this is this is morally wrong, you know, like morally, I don't, yeah, right, you right. know, because because uh, you know, I don't even think most immigration officers like. I, most of the immigration lawyers that I've spoken to before, you know, it's like they don't want to challenge the court for like, you know, did my paper get lost or they don't want to accuse a judge of being racist. They, they don't want to go down that path, you know, and that's right. probably just because that's just probably just because they're probably they, they're scared. They're scared. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah. scared because. You know, I named out the judge of my YouTube video. I don't care. You know, yeah, I name it, name it, name it, name it. Well, Mr. Ham Hanbury, his name's um, Hanbury, Mr. Hanbury from the Upper Tribunal. That's his name, Hanbury, H A N. Mr. Hanbury from the Upper Tribunal. So, yeah. is, is it, which, which, uh, I know it's not going to be magistrate's court. It would be like a court of justice. Yeah, it'd be like immigration, immigration high court. That's what it would be. Immigration high court. Immigration but, high yeah. court, Mr. Hanbury. What's his background? Yeah. Maybe. I, I, you know, like, you know, but it's like... I, 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 yeah, tell us, tell us everything you need to say, brother. No, nah, but you know what? And I, I, and I appreciate it that, you know, because it got, it got around. It, all, all, all that can really be done now is that somebody from a particular position steps in and gets involved. That's, that's basically what can only be done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need... No, the, the petition, the, the petition stuff, like that, that ain't really gonna do much in itself. I don't need no GoFundMe. Am I, right? you know, like it's just that the right person sees this and be like, you know what, I want to step in. You know, like how when the Stevie Lawrence situation happened, the right person stepped in, even though it took like twenty years, it happened. You know, you need you need one of those kind of people that, that it's their job. You know, so of course they want to make their money, but at the same time, there's a there's a moral and a heart thing to be like, no, this is completely wrong. And until I meet that type of person, then it's kind of like, okay, we're just gonna. It's good it's in public because now that anything the Home Office does, they know it's in the public light now. They're gonna be really nice, but you, you know, you know what I'm saying. So it, it, the most people can do is just really just share it. Like, and again, I don't, it's not an expectation of anybody. I don't expect that's not. You know what I'm saying, but that's what the most anyone could possibly be do because really it's it's a it's more a human rights thing than it is an immigration thing. I've got an it's idea. More human, it's more a human rights thing than it than it than an immigration situation. Come yeah. on, brother, that's right. You know, in a time where human rights are needed more than ever, you know, in a time where people are now in need of human rights more than ever, we have to be studying the Human Rights Convention. Uh, the Human Rights Act of 1988. I mean, I, I say every week on this platform, people go and read up on your human rights, your st statutory rights, legislative rights, legislative rights, common law rights, common law. Go and study a natural law. I tell, go and read up on it. And and um, brother, I idea came to me while you're speaking, sir. And people, anyone that please. Guys, tune in, tune in onto this. Share this video everywhere about our brother, actor, stunt. You know what? The last time we saw each other was 2018, yeah? Oh, is it? What? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> On that film. Yes, yes. 2018, yeah. West, and West Elian Film Studios on his house. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's the last time. Yeah, it was the last time. It was the last time. Bro, you know what's so crazy, yeah? And I know you'll understand this, yeah? This is so crazy. You'll understand right. this, yeah? I, I, I reviewed my, my dream book, yeah? Because I write down my dreams. I used to write down my dreams. I dreamed that night, yeah? And you remember, right. I had this, remember I had the scene where I was underwater and I had to yeah. open up my eyes and That's look, yeah? Scary, bro. Remember, bro, That's when I checked my dream, when I checked my dream book, yeah? Because I, I checked it a year later just to go back. I had a dream, yeah? I swear to God I could show you the book, bro. I had a dream where I wrote down that I was picked. I was doing a job and I was picked to be put underwater and look up. I swear to you. And that was a month before. Wow. I, a month before I'd done the job and I only knew about the job a week before because of Abby Girl. I, when I read that, I was like, jeez. But wow. um, yeah, that's, that's something I know you would understand. So I had to share that with you. 
Yes, but, bro. So when we see when we write things down, the power of the words, man, power of dreams. Yeah. We make things happen, bro. Bro, man, that was awesome, man. Yeah. That cast for uh, his house. This brother here, he's a stunt man. He's a stunt man. He's a performer of all types. Motivate. Look, this man's got evidence for days when it comes to working in this country. And brother, I see that you're going to be fully compensated. Big time. You're going to be compensated for everything you pay out. You're going to be fully compensated. I have an idea as well, brother, is that as filmmakers, as documentary makers, and as creators, an idea came to me. And the idea could be where you can film and document what's happening with you and how it affects our mental health. Because there's many, many other brothers that are going through this, black and mm. white. Many, many people are going through this. But you, you, you've got the platform, you're, you're an actor, so you can put it out there as to what you're going through. And I'm thinking maybe do a short film or something, a documentary or something, even if it's done in animation about what some of what you've been through and put together as a short film or just a short like 20 minute 15 minute short film because that's another way we can take the fight out there bro because yeah you know it's just an idea that i had that came in my mind yeah. while you were speaking yeah no yeah say nothing man we talk anyway yeah definitely so I, I, even done, I even done my own self-documentary not really like a documentary but where i showed all my paperwork because i got all my paperwork i put it online like all my paperwork. So, because you know what, I want people mm. to know, recognize that none of this is bias. None mm. of this is like emotional. You know, like when people tell a story, it's easy to throw the race card. It's easy to yeah, 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 yeah. No, like everything I'm saying is on paper. Facts. Come on. No, no isms, no schisms. One judge said I should have. Judge said that I provided all the evidence. You know, hold on. In fact, I, I'm gonna just just. I'm going to just do this right here, right now, right in front of you. Got it, bro. Come on. So you remember, you remember, so you, remember, so remember you heard me talk about what the judge said I didn't provide, yeah? What and the what's the name of that judge one more time again? Hackleberry, what? Mr. Hanbury. Mr. Hanbury. Mr. Yeah. Hanbury. Han. Yeah. Berry. Hanbury. Yeah. So Hanbury. But, but here, with the other judge, I just take one of the pieces of the paper. The, the judge said, Document evidence relating to his children, partner, progress on probation, volunteer and paid work has been provided and went largely unchallenged at the hearing. So all of it is That's here. A claim. That's you a false claim. That's fraud, actually. The judge, I mean, I'm just from stuff that I've been reading. That's fraud. There's no proof yeah. of claim in what you're saying there. That can be totally destroyed you you no, have your that. claim your proof is your children were there you got witnesses and also oh, yeah. you're an actor you're on tv man's been a, look your people my brother here eastenders my brother here brotherhood my brother here tarzan my brother here come on let's name him up now that, his house mm -hmm. man. my brother here C cgi graphics and everything yeah yeah so you've yeah, got I've countless done. support Across the board, brother. Yeah. Countless. Yeah, no, 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 I appreciate it, man. It's like, again, it's just one of those ones. And this is where, like, but again, you, you understand, like, you understand my philosophy. And on a grand yeah. scale of, on the grand scale, scale, scale of things, this is just a blip in a life. You understand? It's a blip. You know, because, you know, everything serves its purpose and everything happens for a reason. And it's because of my spiritual belief on, on life that, this is why it can never, it can never. They can't break you, brother. Own me. You can't own me. The experience can't yeah. own me. I own the experience. You understand what I'm saying? So oh. for me, I know that, yes, in my life, in my life, if I think of it on a physical level, yes, it might have, you know, an effect. But when I think it from my higher self and think, yo, maybe all of this is happening so that I am the person to bring it to the light and challenge. You know what I'm saying? Because I'll be on Twitter and I'll be, Tweet in the home office, it ain't never gonna end. <laughs> you know, I'm on exactly. to you. Put your, your tweets here, bro, and your hand is there so we can all retweet yeah, and hashtag up the team. I'll, 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 I'll post the, um, uh, I, I, you know, I, I post the, I'll tweet them. I'm gonna tweet them every other day, like, yo, home office, I see you. Like, I'm, I'm not 
what it is yeah. you're in the background, you know what I'm saying? So mm. for me, it's just, it's just one of those things where it's like, that's the, the bigger purpose. And again, you know, I, I've done a lot of interviews on this with the news and everything. Sure. And you know, they, they ask me like, how has it affected you mentally? And I'm like, oh, wow. like for me, realistically, and I'll be honest with you, bro, I'm good. You know, like <laughs> the, only, the, the only time, the only time, you know, it, it, it plays on my mind is when I get a, re, a, a new letter. You know, when something... Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's psychology, but they do that all the time. Yeah. Boom, you get the letter, and it's like, yeah, we're going to do this, da 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 At that moment, it has an effect. But after that, it's just like, okay, cool. Because I, I don't worry, because I'm not... You know, listen, life is either going to go this way or that way. So I could be now thinking, all right, so obviously I've got to apply for my limited leave for August, yeah? I've got to apply again. I could either be thinking, what if they refuse me? What if they refuse me? That means I can't work. If I can't work, how am I going to provide? Da, 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 da. Or I can be like, it's going to happen. Or let's see what happens and until then, and we'll deal with it there and then. And then when you look at people, and when you look at people going through the stuff in um, Palestine and all of these things, yes. oh, there's people yes. like, oh, you know oh come on, baby. Like, oh. Come on, there's, there's people out there that would love to have the life that I have. You know, love to oh, be no. trapped in the UK. Do you understand? Oh. So this doesn't mean that what what my situation doesn't have any impact or it's useless. It's just that my philosophy mm. is there's somebody out there that will still want my life, and there's somebody out there going through a billion times worse. So Legend, why, why 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 am I going to continue moaning? Mm. If the whole you know if the if the biggest if the biggest it's the biggest organization in the country wants to tackle me, then let's go. <laughs> let's Come go. On. You're not on your own. Let's you're go. not on your own, brother. Remember, and I know you're a man of spirit, brother. You're of the same lineage as me. Yeah. David no. busts Goliath's backside. People need to remember that. David busts Goliath's backside. Yeah. And David chopped off the life's head with his own sword. We're not advocating violence, people. We're not saying literally go out there and take your machete. No, 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 no. Blade is being filmed in Marvel Studios. Leave that. We leave that to the film and the actors. Yeah. In real life, that's a metaphor for that the sword represents the law, represents word and wisdom, as you know, Ace, you know already. But I just want to remind people, especially to my Christian family, Rasta family, spiritual family, everybody, David, who was the youngest brother, Bust Goliath's backside. Yeah, everybody used to sing that song in primary school. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine feet. Nine feet tall, talking about Goliath. And he got his head chopped off, metaphorically speaking. Metaphorically speaking, he got his head chopped off by uh, Goliath, excuse me, David, who took Goliath's sword. And that means to me, the words we got up, as you know, brother, already, we, are, we, we have to have faith. And remember, it was David who had the smooth stone that they lick shot in the temple of Goliath. So that may, represents, when you're telling me, brother, and you're sitting there looking good, as good as you look, and you got the glow coming from you, brother, like Bruce Lee, right? The glow? <laughs> <laughs> and you're saying you're not stressed, and you're blessed, brother? Yeah. You've won already. Yeah, and this man. is the power of us as a people, brother. This is our power. we got spiritual power. We need to get mm. back to that level. And that's why them judges in them courts they wear a black cloak and they wear that old looking kinky hair on their head because they know they represent the ancestors, but they're perpetrating a fraud, but they're trying to dress like the ancestors because black, black is not a color. It represents power. And that's why powerful mm. people in society wear black or dark clothes. Like me on the Matrix wears the black sunglasses. Like the judges or the vicars and the people of, 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 of society always wear black ISIS papers goes into this. Dr. Frances Press Wellesley, she goes into the psychology of racism and how in society it's played out all the time. So, brother, when I see you shining there, man, with your black, golden, handsome self and everything's all right, you're operating on a high frequency, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm, I'm good. They cannot get us on, bro. They can't get yeah, us. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, bro. Like, 100%. Man. I'm never, I'm never going to be one of these people where where you know and, I, and i'm not saying i don't take it away from other people that you know when you know when they 
explain their story and they say, you know, they go through havoc. That might be their, their truth. Yeah. But for me, it's like, bro, I've still been able to work. So, like, yeah, it's been annoying. Like, in the last six weeks, in the last six weeks, I've been offered three different jobs in three different countries, which Come I can't on. do. Obviously, obviously I can't do because I can't travel. He's getting work, <laughs> you, know you can't you know? travel. Yeah, I can't travel because I don't have no passport either way. Do you know what I'm saying? So when when that happens, it's like, oh, man, damn. And you know as an actor, bro, you know as an actor, someone paying for you to come out for you to do your ish. Yo, that's 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 one of the gold tickets. I'll you know? tell you, brother, working yeah. holiday, man. You travel, you yeah. get to meet people, you learn stuff, yeah. and you're getting paid as well. We don't yeah. pay, bro. Oh. And you know what? That's a loss of earnings that Mr. Hanbury has stopped. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's, that's common law, that's loss. That's, you know? Yeah, that's loss. So, but, you know, you have to always count the blessings as well. You know, I've done, I, I work from the, the, the Marvel Eternal film that comes out in November. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say that. Come again? In November. In November. November. Yeah, yeah. So, I, God, I, I, I don't know. Eternal, I, Angelina Jolie, uh, Don't yeah, tell yeah. You can't yeah. talk too much about that. I know you can't. Yeah, talk I, can't, too much. I, can't I can't say what I've done for it because they haven't revealed it yet. But if right. the trailer comes out, when the trailer comes, but I've I, I done a lot of work on that film. Like, Come on. Like, similar to Tarzan, I've done a lot of work on that film. Listen, so, you heard it on Black Car Speakers Lounge. Ace is on the Marvel Eternal movie to be released, hopefully, God willing, this year. We've got him right here. So as much as the brother's going through what he's going through, see, God just give you the blessings all the time, man. Yeah, yeah that's God, what I'm saying. It's a spiritual warfare, bro. Yeah. It's a spiritual warfare, really, to be honest. You know, because you keep tapped in and you're staying grateful, you're staying grateful, that gratitude frequency keeps giving you that blessings, bro. And that's a lesson we all need to take from. The more thankful and gratitude we have is the more it uplifts you. They say your gratitude is your attitude and your attitude is your altitude. The altitude is that which the aeroplane needs to climb up. So to go higher... We need to have gratitude and be grateful. And that's what you're, you're doing right here, brother. You're showing us. So I thank you. And you know, Eid Mubarak to all the Muslims as well. Bless Eid Mubarak to all the Muslims who celebrate in uh, Eid. You know, Eid Kareem, blessed Ramadan. That's a spiritual thing. Fasting, all these things are at our disposal. Sorry, go ahead, bro. No, 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 no. Come on, man. I'm, I'm thankful to everyone, you know. And like, again, so like I said, for me, like, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Like, you, you know, like, I've, I've, I'm one of the names, I'm, I'm blessed to have one of the, the, the impactful names in the motion capture industry in the video game world. I'm very grateful I've worked on... You're the only black man on the that does game. motion capture, bro. You're the only black man on your level that does motion capture. You know, that you I know. know saying, so, yeah, so, you know, like, I'm, I'm grateful. Every, everything has blips. That's the way the, the, way the pendulum swims, you know? Come on. One side, the other side, it's about how do you rise above the pendulum swing and how it affects you? So I'm, I'm always good, bro. You know, I remember, one time, I, remember, I remember one time you said to me, most, well, I remember we was in a car and you said to me, it never left me, you said, most men act like the four-legged beast. They don't act like they've risen up. They don't act like they've risen up and think oh. from their higher self. They act like the four-legged. And it's true, bro, you know? It's true. A lot of people, a lot of people think from... The, the limbic system and the reptilian brain that you know like you said four legged just survival repetition you know and I, I remember you said that and it's never left and it's fact you know you you have to remember you stand up tall so for me it's like you have the cape bro you could be going through the worst thing some people could go through the worst thing let you win the lottery and you see how that emotion changed understand so therefore there's there's, that means there's a possibility to have that, that, that personal mastery to do that without an external factor to influence that, you know? And that's what I like to be in control of. Do you understand? It don't mean that there's never no, no moments in a day where I don't feel like mm. blah, but my core, I always return to my core, you know? So my core is I'm grateful, I'm in peace, I'm in balance. But yes, things can happen that throws me off, you know. You know, yeah. no one stays on a diet for the rest of their life. You come might on, you know, you have a little cheat meal. You have a cheat meal, but you go back to your core. You understand That's what I'm right. saying? So I'm I'm grateful to always 
have the core that I have that enables me to take from the experience and not let the experience take from me. And that's what I live by, you know? You know, if you own the experience, yeah, if you own the experience, then you can use it for yourself. If the experience owns you, that's mm. depression, that's stress. Because it owns you and you're staying connected to the experience that's already passed. But when mm. you take from the experience, rather than let the experience take from you, then there is nothing that someone can go through that they can't overcome. Like I've, watched, I've watched stories of mums that have gone to the prisons to forgive the person that's murdered their child. That, that, that's like another level of owning the experience of forgiveness. That's like, you understand what I'm saying? And when yeah, you look at people yeah, being able to yeah. do these kind of things, you have to say to yourself, that means all types of forgiveness is possible. Do you understand? And that means that forgiveness frees you because if you stay in that state of of hatred, you know what it Come does. On. What's mental becomes physical. You know that's why there's particular emotions and psychological things that are connected to particular organs. So Go that's ahead, why I'm people stress, that, stress. You know what I'm saying? But but that's why people stress, 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 stress. And then remember, the body has to release it. It has to be released. Everything needs an outlet. So therefore, if you do not have an outlet and you're stressing or whatever. It's outlet is going to be internal. When it becomes internal, yeah, it becomes a part of the organs. When it becomes a part of the organ, that's when you know you get unwell and all of these types of things. In fact, when you're stressing, your immune system shut off. You know, wow. you're flat, flat. Come on, tell us. Yeah, so when you know, if you if if people didn't know, when 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 they when people have a transplant, like an organ transplant, they inject the individual with stress hormones because it shuts off the immune system in order for them to for it not to react to the new organ that's being placed in so if you think about when you're constantly stressing you're shutting down your own immune system you know so therefore and you're functioning from the flight of flight sector of yourself so therefore you're, there's no there's no growth you understand what i'm saying in in those in those phases so for me when i when i started figuring out certain things I like you know what you're right about you, we should know about law and, 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 and I'm gonna look more into it and my thing is I I believe everyone should know about psychology. Everyone should know Absolutely. about psychology. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everybody like even if just the basics, because at the end of the day, there's no reason why you should have your biggest asset, which is your mind, and you don't know how it functions. God. You know how That's you know true. how your you know how your phone functions, you know how to <laughs> Your TV functions, you know how to navigate yourself from your area, but you don't know how your mind works. You know, every talk I've ever done, bro, every talk I've ever done, when I ask people, how does the mind work? What is the basic factors of the mind? Most, everybody Good can't Good question. Ask. I you would know? like to ask people on the platform in our closing section, how does the mind work? And I want to add to this brother's beautiful question of how the mind works. Where is the mind? Because we use terms like, exactly. um, yeah, something was on my mind, or uh, you just passed my mind, or he's out of, or she's out of her mind, you know? Yeah. Where is the mind? Is the mind the brain? Is the brain the mind? These are, ask that no. question. I want people to answer, ask this question. Go ahead, Ace, go on. Yeah, so, you know, it's just, I believe everyone should learn about psychology. You know, psychology, neuroscience, epigenetics. Epigenetics is about how environment affects DNA. There's so much things. And when, wow. you, um, and when you understand these kind of things, you give power to yourself because you realize, wow, this is what the mind can do. And I own one. You know, Come it's on. like, imagine, imagine everybody had a a, a, a gold brick they, everyone had one and they never knew what it was and then they went and researched and they found out what this is worth this mm. that is your mind to say right i've got one of these so when you think yeah. about it for yourself that when you start figuring out okay what the heart can do you know what the heart can do more than just the beat what it can do on an energetic level that the mind has that the heart has brain neurons in it as well the heart thinks for itself you know the heart vibrates more than the brain like wow. when you discover when you discover certain things and you recognize right i have all of these things and and even the stuff like 
you know, you as you know, nothing nothing exists without purpose. Nothing can exist without purpose. It's impossible. So when you realize, hold on, I was given a body like right now, if I cut my arm, my body's going to do everything it can to heal. It's going to do everything. And all my body does, every single thing in my body is purpose. Its purpose is to keep me alive. That's its purpose. How can you not think you have purpose? How can you not think you have purpose? Do you understand? Like everything in your body all works as a collective to keep this one body alive. A hundred trillion cells. So when you think like that, you know, and you think on that scale, you're like, rah, this, I must have a purpose. You know, and then when you start thinking about what the mind's capability is and you start researching it and you're like, wow, like my mind can do this. And then you ask that, and then it's, it's all about asking yourself questions. When you, when you realize that everything is based around perception, belief, and, and behavior, and then you realize, right, you can control your perception. So my perception, yeah. So the home office, I can turn around and think from perception because there's always, you know, there's always different, you know, as they say in quantum fit, in quantum physics, they say there's multiple of possibilities. You know how they say there's multiple possibilities of something. Yeah. And there's the same with perception. You can actually say, I can actually say the home office is doing this because, you know, they're being, you know, racist or, you know, they're trying to get at me and why me? Or I can turn on and believe that the perception of this is happening is because it was a part of my calling and it's to use to help others to understand the situation. But it's guess what? Mm. What the best thing about perception is, it's your choice what you choose to believe. That's the Jeez. best thing about perception. That's the best that's the best thing about perception. It's your choice to choose what you want to believe. You understand? So you can believe that that way, that way, that way, that way. But my thing is, you should go with the one that's best. What most people do in general, what most people really do in, in initially is they go by the feeling and follow the feeling. So you know, oh. if the home office makes you feel like crap, da 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 da, then they follow the feeling when really you're supposed to hear the feeling mm. understand why the feeling is happening but then go to your mindset and and think deeper i see someone said hold on the mind is made up of intelligent thinking cognitive behavior subconscious thoughts as well as an emotional center mm. book, biology book yeah biology of belief I've, I've got that book i've got that i've got that book biology of belief biology uh, of belief yeah, by a brief every part of your body holds memory or some form of intelligence. Yeah. yeah, it's that and how environment affects DNA, you know. Wow. You're going deep, Ralph. Yeah, You're you know, no, you know, and we're keeping it we're keeping it nice and light, but No, 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 go in. <laughs> You're not even it no more. We're there already too late. We look back the ocean, the the beach is way out there. We're in the deep now. Yeah. We're swimming now. Go ahead. So yeah, now it's just it's just basically having this understanding, but I definitely believe everybody should understand a good level of psychology because you have a mind. And if you, if you do not know how it works, you will be living your life of somebody else's belief. Oh. And that, that's the fact. And that's the fact. And if you look at society, if you look at society, most people live by the belief that's created by society. You know, that's why... That's why so people are many people are caught up in so many things. But don't get it twisted. We all play our little part. You know what I'm saying? Like we come from a particular environment, and you know we might come from an environment where they say, you know, if you get a Rolex, it means that. And you know we might go get a Rolex because you know. So we can't deny say not one part of society has a play in us at all. We can't say that. But we have to look and think what is the majority of it that reflects self. Do you understand? Reflects yes. self. If you look at society, like prime example for females, if you look at society, prime example for females, society around females is focused on their image. And because the reason why it's focused on their image is so that they can sell them products. Do you understand? Like, think about it. Think about it. A hundred years ago, if you told somebody, I'm going to put this plastic in you so you can have this. You were just thinking, what? What? Plastic in where? And I'm not against, I'm not against it for anybody that wants to do it for themselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? But they, they've, you know, if you show nipple, it's sexual. It's a nipple. Man can show his nipple in a beach. If a woman does it, 
it's like game over, even though the only difference is the size. Do you understand? So mm -hmm. society has shaped women to by makeup, by makeup, you know, plastic surgery, all of these types of things. You know, all, all of these things, and that's mm. society. And because a lot of people don't understand the mentalism side of themselves, they buy into what they believe the, the, the actual picture is, when really it's all basically neuromarketing. Do you oh, neuromarketing. wow. Say that word again one more time. Neuromarketing. That's, that's, that's one thing people should really look up, neuromarketing, because there's basic things about your brain that, it is drawn to because of the history of the brain. You understand? And when you start understanding things on a particular level, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of realize that you can overcome anything. You know, you can cut that. I love that. Yeah, neuromarketing. When you look at neuromarketing and they show you the the neuro the neuroscience they use in order to sell you something or buy you something. All right, I'll give you I'll give you one example. Anchoring. So anchoring is when, let's say, let's say, a, say, let's say there's a, a, a spraying advert, yeah, a deodorant advert. But in the advert, it, but in the advert, it's got nothing to do with spraying. It's got to, it's this love thing where, you know, you feel great, you feel good. And, you know, when you're watching it and you're getting that and you can see these good things, then the ad, the links, uh, the links flies in. So yeah. basically. When you start thinking about, oh, I want to feel good, feel strong, you think of links. You understand? <laughs> yeah. That's what anchoring is. So it means at the emotional part of the commercial, they throw in the, 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 the product. You understand? And that's what's called anchoring. And that's what they use a lot. That's why they, you know, when you watch adverts, a lot of them, is, uh, there's a story to it. It's either comedy or like it's, you know, powerful. It's, it's, it's anchoring. If I can anchor you, get you by your emotion and throw something in it for that emotion, and then every time that emotion comes out, that's what it is. And say, you, you understand? So Beautiful. Carry on, brother. You're teaching me, brother. I'm learning, bro. Go ahead, man. It's like all, all of these things is, is stuff that people should go and type up and just look at that. When I... When I neuro... Pro, neuro... You, what's that again? Neuro marketing, neuro marketing, beautiful. Yeah. Neuro marketing comes of neuroscience. So, and then if, I, I give you another thing that people are not aware of, and this, this, this is what plays into a lot of things deeply. That we have a thing called mirror neuron, and mirror neuron, mirror neuron is basically when you watch something, see something, and you experience the same feelings as if you're going through it yourself. Oh, yeah? so you know jeez. Well, like that's where they get the monkey see monkey do. So you know, you know that like when you're watching a film, like get out, and some parts make you feel, whoa, yeah. Yeah. that's happening because your mirror neurons is taking it in as if like you were there, like you got hyped around that part because you know maybe it was a movie, but and the music, music you, the violence, music, <laughs> everything, everything. That's mirror neurons. So what mirror neurons does, it, that's how babies learn. Because they see, 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 then they do, you know. And so, and so because of mirror neurons, people end up getting into things they don't even know about. So as a young black man, you know, if your mirror neurons sees a particular lifestyle in an estate, hears particular music where they, the guy looks like them, Watch your particular things where the guy looks like them. You go to school, the ones that are the loudest and the, the, the rudest in the class looks like them. Your mirror neurons takes all of these things oh. in. It's subconsciously easier for you to... That's why a lot of people that might be in violence and they find it easy to be violent is because their mirror neurons have taken it in so much it's become a part of their subconscious. Do you understand? Yeah. And that's why it's easier to go and do those kind of things. And mirror neurons plays in so many different things. Anything, anything that you constantly watch, you're teaching your brain to be good at it. Jesus. You understand? And that's, that's, that's why you have, that's why you've got to be careful about everything you watch. And, and it doesn't mean you can't, you know, that means that, yo, we shouldn't go watch a horror film or we shouldn't go watch an action film. But if that's all you do, all that, Oh, that's that's literally your mental diet now. That's your mental diet. 
You understand? Funny how you said that, brother. I want to. I was watching um, a mate of mine who I had the honor of working with, um, Aaron. He's in the movie, excuse me, TV series and Amazon Prime. I'm, I'm proud of him, man. And I love the work of all the actors. They put a lot of work in. Uh, what's it called? The Underground Railroad. That's on Amazon right now. And it's a slave uh, uh, narrative. I found it very hard to watch. I, I, I completed it, but I found it very difficult to watch. It's based on a book. It's directed by Academy Award winning Act, uh, uh, director Barry Jenkins and it's called The Underground Railroad people go and watch it for yourself um, I've been I'm, I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you nah, I was like, I can't do it I can't, but I'm happy it's like, brother, if it was you even if I'm not the biggest fan of that particular TV series, the fact that you're in it, I'm going to watch it, brother but coming off what you're saying yeah. in terms of neural pathways, neural learning neurodiversity it's it, we have to be as actors it's beautiful that you're teaching this brother because and you know this as an actor and a performer literally as the sister magic we are literally having juju magic being cast upon us each time we open our brain and our eyes and ears to the television bro it's such a powerful thing because you're talking about neuro habits and all these kind of things and that largely yeah. that you, you said, I mean, I, what came to my mind was 90, the 99 Flake advert. You, this might be before your time where the woman's on the road, but only God, yes, say chocolate, tastes like chocolate, that you, something like that. Well, she's sitting there with a 99 Flake. And as a you, you're like, oh, okay, mommy, I want some chocolate. Yay. You get old, you realize yeah. there's a subtext behind that advert there. Yeah. You know, with a lady yeah. just looking at the chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Yeah, people understand. Yeah, I don't want to spell it out, but you know. So yeah, sex, violence, all these things. And then I think a lot of us have developed a sadistical mindset because we love to watch slave dramas. Is it that we, we, we're developing subtly a sadistical mindset, neurologically speaking, if we keep exposing our mindset? Because I, I will watch, I do like, I watch horror movies. I like watching horror movies. But yeah. I can differentiate. But yeah, yeah. I, I watched this on Amazon and I watched my boy in it. He done an awesome job. The cast done a great job on it. But at the same time, it's a slave narrative. Yeah, you know, I'm, 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 I have, I, yeah, I think, and the maddest thing is you have to also think that it seems to be like all of these slave narrative ones seem to do the best for <laughs> black writers. And stuff, yes. You know? you know, Get Out was, Get Out was obviously not slave, but it was again, on, of that genre, yeah. Of that genre, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It seems like these genres of black writers with these genres, it seems to do well. Like, okay, cool. But this is what I really did like. Get out, and the reason why I like Get yeah, Out is because it. because because it was it was a, it was telling a racist story, but it was told in horror rather than you know the same old plain. Mm -hmm. Thing. And again, I don't. It's like me. I, I I haven't watched Top Boy. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't take away from Top Boy, but it's like mm -hmm. I don't need to see something that, regardless of what anybody wants to say, mm. Top Boy does help the, the the lower level thinking person to keep thinking when they see black guys. This black guy is what they do. Facts. Lower Facts. level. So meaning you can't differentiate. Do you understand? Because yes, let's be real. Come on. When you heard about pit bulls, what did you hear about pit bulls, bro? You heard that pit bulls were the yeah. most violent dogs, you know, da -da 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 -da, American pit bulls. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that was all from just TV before you ever saw American pit bulls. And it was so, meant to rock riders. <clears throat> Some people saw that and thought, yeah, let me go get pit bull. Tell so, pit bull yeah. so now imagine for the first time going into an area full of American pit bulls off the leash. Your <laughs> mind would subconsciously go back to what it saw about Pitbull, which is violent. Did it love that, love that. Do you understand? So, mm. like, like this now, when police or police or people of a different background go into areas where what they saw off the TV and they yes. look like people off their TV, they subconsciously are in a fair state of mind. If they, yes, if they don't have their mind, do you understand? So, it, it, it's crazy.
crazy, you know, it's crazy. It very deep, you know, like it's very deep, brother. It's let's very never deep. Forget, let's never forget that crime pays on both ways. You understand? Crime mm. pays criminals, but crime pays, you know, one person going to to jail, judge get paid, solicitor get paid, lawyer get paid, circle you know, get paid, <laughs> circle get paid, the prison staff that let you in, the prison wing officer, the yeah. wing manager, yeah. the deputy thingy. There's so many people that get paid off oh, one system. Come on. You understand? And it has to, I remember every business has to have marketing. Whew, you're going, you understand? Come on, come you understand? On. So, and you have to look, the marketing is subliminal. It's subliminal marketing. You get me? Like, for me, bro, you've got to ask it like this. Watch it right now. This, yeah. is, the, the, this is the thing for me. I, I didn't know that Chance the Rapper, is it Chance the Rapper? Is it not, no, not Chance. Um, Tyler the Creator, I think it is. One of those rappers. He couldn't enter the UK. Because, um, well, who was it? Who was a who? Who was the female? Who was the female? Theresa May banned him. Twenty one Savage, I think. You told us Twenty One Savage. Twenty One Savage. It was no. It was Tyler the Creator. Oh, yeah. okay. She banned him from coming to the country because his music insinuated, his music insinuated in her mind homophobic behavior. You know. And and it spoke about your yeah, homophobic and I think like domestic violence and stuff. So she banned him from coming to the UK. So let me get this right. You ban someone from coming to the UK because he's having this type of music. Okay, cool. But yet still, we in the UK can make music that helps to perpetrate violence. But there's no banning. If I yeah. made a song right now, go shoot the mayor. Go shoot the go shoot the prime minister, shoot them up, shoot them up, yeah. shoot the prime. What do you think is going to happen to my song, bro? <laughs> what do you think is going to happen, bro? <laughs> if, I, if, I made a, if I made a whole album talking about shooting the police, what do you think will happen, bro? Remember, and, and they're going to they're gonna cut it. They're going to cut it. Mm. You understand? So mm. I can't, but why can't I make music doing that? Because they know it influences people after a certain amount of time it can influence people. Remember, why do you think they? Why do you think NWA stopped talking about shooting the police? Oh yeah, they used to get their team shut down, bro. You're one hundred percent. When they started rapping about more, like you know, violence in the in the hood, it was okay. Why? Yes, yes, facts, man. Why? You understand? So it's just like it's it's just many things you just have to also just be aware of on mm. on a on a subliminal so level and a conscious bro. level. So solid when they were really big in the late 90s and yeah. i mean so solid was an organization they were about do for self employing self mega man you know i've had the honor of meeting him a few times and some of the men so solid you know, all from the same gaff ring but they, these young people were locking down radio stations they're locking down venues that had crowds of people following them they they were really the catalysts of grime. We give respect to those pioneers of grime, but they were the ones who were in between jungle music, in my opinion, jungle music, garage music, and the crossover from house music over to then what that beat that Soul Sully produced. They got a whole crowd, an audience, all that, look, all them man that used to go to jungle raves and roast and Astoria back in the day. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. But so solid were a collective and an organization and a business, a corporation. And that's what the powers that be did fear. Young people united coming together, taking the country by storm and influencing the country as well. And that's so what I, at, I really believe that's what uh, I, I, I should I should be, their career got destroyed because of one or two violence or gun charges, whatever. But now, yeah. when, a rap, when a rapper gets done with a gun charge over here, it's That's nothing. Great. It's nothing. Do you understand? Mm. Because at the end of the day, bro, like I said, every business needs marketing, bro. <laughs> every business needs marketing. Come on. Pr private prisons, private prisons, I, don't know, I think a private prison is like 80 grand per individual. You understand? <laughs> for, a, for a year. Say that again, brother. I think it's 80 grand for one individual for a year. I don't know if it's changed, but this was years ago. So I doubt it's going to go down. Yeah. yeah. And more prisons have become private. It's a business, bro. When you privatize something, it's a business. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on. You need to set it up to make money. Come you know on, people. Saying? Listen. So, Young so, people. So crime can never... We can. Nobody ever wants to fully get rid of crime, bro. Because it, it pays Come a lot. Come on. Come on, brother. Money. You brother, let me, say? Just, let me just drop something in real quick to your teaching us, brother. You're teaching us, and I thank you so much. I'll go further that right now, and I feel you know this already, that there's a thing, the police are policing what is called victimless crimes right now. So a speeding ticket is not a crime, according to common law, unless there's injury, harm, or loss. I'm not telling anyone to go out there and go and do 80 miles in a 40 or 20 zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, cool is it? No, I didn't tell you that. Victimless crime, council tax. If you don't pay council tax, they slap a fine on you, whatever bailiffs. Parking tickets. What else is a victimless? That most of the crime is victimless. I'm not saying that there's no crime that takes place, but it's victimless. Because that victimless crime feeds the corporation, as you're saying, but it feeds these different uh, establishments. And um, I can't believe that there's still people naive to that. And I remember listening to uh, a man called Dr. Umar Johnson, where he break, mm -hmm. breaks down the relationship between hip-hop in America and the prison complex and how yeah. the record labels feed the streets a certain kind of energy, which then feeds into the prison complex, which then feeds into detention centers, which then feeds into the destruction of the family and everything. Brother, and it's the same thing I see it happening here. Bro. You know? Bro, it's, it's, this is why I say to people, you know, study neuromarketing. Or you don't even have to study it. Just go on YouTube. Because when I came out of prison, when I came out of prison, I stopped listening to all music. I watched no TV. And all I would do is go on YouTube and type in Powerful of Motion. And I'll listen, I'll, I'll listen to a whole three-hour lecture. Come power on. of Emotions, Power of Mind. And then you'll see, someone will say a word, and then you go to that word, new, new, neuromarketing. Oh, mm. neuroscience. Oh, the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere. Then neuromarketing. And then the, 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 the limbic system. And then, you know, you, one thing just leads to yes. another. And bro, I, I spent at least three to four years, two, at least three years just on YouTube watching things over and over from, yes, from a science perspective, from a spiritual perspective, everything. So it's just like when you understand yourself before your personal self, meaning like, you know, what you like and you don't like and that, when you understand yourself, for me, that's, that, that enables you to have some form of self-mastery. It enables you because you understand why this marketing works. You understand there's a reason why, you know, you stay in a relationship that you know is not good for you. Mentally, you know wow. you're not supposed to be there. Emotionally, you have created neurons through the belief that you've associated with this person, emotion and thought. That's why you physically find it hard to leave. And then when you wow. and then when you do leave, the reason why you think you missed the person is because remember, you have trained your brain to say, I want this person. So your brain is gonna do everything now to try and get this person back. And that's why you miss things. That's why you 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 see you you might check up on them and everything because on the social media, you know, gee yeah. whiz, that's yeah. so man. Yeah, the People neuro. On the the yeah. Come on, bro. That's cool. Like you created neurons in your brain, mm -hmm. and for you to now go past it. Remember, your brain does whatever you train it to do. You know, if you train your brain to sit on a chair at a certain hours, amount of time a day, it will find its way to get to that opportunity. Do you understand? Wow. So, if you're training, the most powerful thing that any human being has is your belief system, because that's what gives you your power, what you believe. And remember, right, bro, think about it. Mm. The reason that the mayor or the prime minister has the power that they have is because there's enough people that believe in that setup. That's what it is. Take that guy to the Amazon or deep somewhere in Africa or with the Aborigines. That guy don't have that power because those people don't have that belief about that individual. Fact, it's all belief. So once you have, once you have certain beliefs of yourself, magic words, what, what, I'm saying. what are you saying in there? You know what I'm saying? So everything is belief. So when you create a belief around something, 
you have to be careful. You have, you have to be. So if you're in a relationship with someone and you create the belief that you're my everything. Remember, a real belief is when thought and emotion have come as one. That's when it's a belief. If, if the emotion is not connected with the thought, it's not a belief. It's just a wishful thinking. But when you have a thought, so listen, when you think about your child and then you have that flush of feeling, that's a belief you've created about them. You know, there's a belief. So it's a thing where you have to be mindful about the belief that you've created people and about things to why, you know, people don't, don't, are unable to free themselves from the situation. Do you understand? So people, people really, people should always, for me, the greatest thing is knowing as much as you can of yourself. You know, we're never going to know that the, everything about the mind because one, you can't so, even, you, you can't even, yeah, it's infinite. It's infinite on this, on this realm. So you can't know everything, but there's certain things that you can know that can navigate you through, you know, you might not know everything on the phone, you know, how the phone's created everything, but there's mm-hmm. certain things about the phone that you can do to be able to use it or if it crashes to be able to reset. But then when it gets past your point, what do you do? You take it to a specialist. So what people need to do is become a specialist of themselves, Jeez. of their mind, of their body, of themselves. And that for it gives you more power and ownership. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. It's about who's got the most ownership of the shares in your mind? Who has the most ownership of the shares in your mind? Do you understand? Because technically your mind is an asset. And the reason why it's an asset is because people want to own a majority of your mind because if they do, then they've got you hooked to buy their products, to listen to them and everything. Do you understand? So this is why if you have the most shares of your asset, then therefore you are able to navigate yourself through particular things. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's just, I just tell people, listen, study yourself study the psychology 100 percent. that Bravo. is like the key thing i want i, I could actually just, i i i don't want to say no more i don't want to say anything i could just listen to you brother <laughs> thank I, you bro. I'll, like, I'll, likewise, I'll, bro likewise because what your neuro neuro marketing and yeah. neuro advertising so you got yeah neuro marketing neuro marketing is the one to look up and neuroscience Neuroscience. Neuroscience, yeah. Very important that actors know this as well. As actors, thespians, performers know this because businesses, top CEOs, top CFOs, they study this. These yeah. people are magicians. Yeah, no, they're, they're hire actors. Yeah. That's why it's called casting. That's why when actors, when we go on auditions, they call it castings by the CD casting director. The word casting is synonymous with casting. A spell. You cast. What are you casting? Cast away. Cast out. Hence, why they say in wickery or in paganism or whatever people believe. If you people say touch, people say touch wood, touch wood. And then where do we make? Where do we go? Where did Ace go to make or, or shoot his films? Where does he go? He works in pine wood. We work in Shepperton and Boring wood. We work in, uh, 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 when we go to the BBC, Wood Lane. Wood. Why wood? Because Hollywood. Yeah? All of it is wrapped up with esoterics. All of it is wrapped up with casting spells. And people don't get nervous because casting spells is not necessarily wicked. It's a double-edged sword. So, bruv, what you're saying is awesome, bruv. And I'm I'm telling you, everything you're saying reminds me of what I've been reading this book, bruv. People, I'm not a big reader. I'm just, I'm in my 40s now, and I'm just, I'm, pick, I'm getting better and better in terms of re- making it more habitual. And what you're saying, Ace, in terms of neural pathways, in psychology, in psychology, they say it takes 21 days to unlearn or learn a new habit. And you wow. know what? What you're saying you know is what? some serious, you know what? serious money right even, now. Bro. Even with that saying, because even my friend said it takes 28 days, it depends. Okay. It depends on what it is, because some scientists say it takes a minimum of 90 days. You know what I'm saying? It really depends mm-hmm. on 
because listen, you could create a new habit in one day. And Come on. I'll give, give you a prime example. There's some people that have watched, you know that thing called Cow, Cowspiracy? I've heard of that, Cowspiracy. It's basically about like how the meat, the meat, in, the meat um, industry and how... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah some, people watched, some people watched that and went vegan. Went vegan from I, that day. Yes, yes. That's a new habit. You've been eating meat your whole life. Come but on. Something, something emotionally went ping, so to the point, so emotionally that it changed your belief system. So how you change your belief, belief system is by like repetition or an emotional experience. So, you know, someone could be involved mm -hmm. in gang crime and they get shot and they're in the hospital almost losing their life. And when they come out of that hospital, they give it all up. Give it all you up. understand? Because the emotional belief that came with that being shot shifted the person entirely. And sometimes it takes it to that level for that person to be able to shift. Do you understand? Because... You know, people, you can create a habit in, I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a, a time limit to say, you know what, if I do this for 21 days, it's going to stick. Because there's been times when I ain't ate chocolate for a whole month, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And the moment I bite that chocolate again, God damn, I'm back in a habit. God you know what it. I'm saying? So, <laughs> so I, it, it, it's all about the emotional reason why you are doing it. You understand? So like, yeah. There's a difference right now. If Courtney wanted to continue, get, wanted to go to the gym, yeah, you could go to the gym for 21 days and 28 days. It don't mean you're going to stay in there for life. But okay. now, if the, if the doctor turned around and said to you, you would lose your family, your kids, and it was fact. Like, if you didn't go to the gym mm. like, four times mm. a week, you would lose your life. And it was fact. Mm. You could see you go into the gym four times a week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the belief around you going to the gym is so profound now, you have to go. Or you got a fight coming up, boxing fight or something, yeah. Yeah, mm. you understand? So it, it, it all comes down to how, it all comes down to the emotional power you have behind something. And I can tell you about neuromarketing because I've used the neuromarketing myself. Like the way that I've got myself in a position of, as an actor in the VFX and motion capture world, I used the same neuromarketing. And I'll, I'll break it down to you real quick. So for instance, I know, on, I know for a fact, fact, that if you want to stick out and stand out, you have to give, do something where the other person never expected it. You know Come on. You do something what the other person never expected. So what does that mean? All right, so me as an actor, all right, if I stuck to what I originally wanted to do, which was be an action actor, and of course, there's not many black action actors. We don't even have a, 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 a real black, black action actor from the UK. We don't. We don't. We've, we don't, never, we had don't. Michael, we've never had a Michael J. White. You don't say. But what I realized is that, okay, cool but we've never had in the world is a black creature actor. So what right. I, I knew with how I looked and my appearance, yeah, my appearance, I could be a top boy like this, like top boy, you know, all of these slave yeah. movies. It's easy. You know, action movie, it's easy. You understand? But when someone sees me with my arm extensions and my tail and all of that, for them, their psychology... <laughs> Because their subconscious sees a black man that's built but using arm extensions and moving with a tail and all of that. And, oh, he, that's his own doing. So subliminally, it stands out even more than if somebody else does it that was of a different background. Yeah. Why? Because when you look at my image and built, you do not think this guy is going to make creature sounds and monster sounds and move with all of these things. So, it, so I use that as a way to navigate myself in. So what I do, I, most of my stuff is on LinkedIn. You're destroying the old, right. So I do what's the unexpected. And then I do things that nobody else is doing. So I, I don't use my, I don't, the, the, the platform I use the most is LinkedIn. That's the platform I use more than anything else. Yeah, and, very good. And LinkedIn, I, I'm connected with people all around the world as animators, VFX, 
I do something called creature reference videos. So reference reference videos is basically when when you know you watch something and then you use that information to create. Now yep. the videos that the videos that I do with my equipment, because I've got a company that makes all of these equipments that I've got. I create reference videos of creature movements so on my, my arms and my legs of mm. moving around. So what it would be like if that, if that creature was to attack and run. Now, I'm the only person in the world making videos like this. You can't <laughs> find these videos anywhere in the world. Come anywhere on, in the world. Do you understand what I'm saying? So because I'm doing it, but then when they watch the videos, firstly, they're seeing something that they've never seen anyone else do before. Secondly, when they see it, they've seen someone of a, that when you look at his image, you don't mm. expect someone to be doing that. So mm. I have videos and I'll get like 10,000 views, 20,000 views and shared all over the place. And I get my work, you know, mm. I've, had privilege, I've had the privilege of someone flying from Canada to come over to capture my work. Do you understand? Right. So it's like that's using neural marketing because I'm going by what I believe you have this expectation of me. And mm -hmm. I'm... Now, if I was to put out stuff of me acting like a bad man or mm -hmm. acting like a, a, a road man, that's yeah. not going to go against what you, because you can look at me and think that. You can look at me and think yeah. that. Do you understand? Because Come on. That's what's out there. So that, that's, that's what, what the, what the media has put out there. And that's what yeah. we join on. We, we consent to it as well. You know, we by consent to it. So by do, doing do. it. So when you see me, someone like me do, running around with my arm extensions and and all my equipment doing creatures, it's like the complete opposite. So it stands out more. Do you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that there's not nobody else that can do it. Of course, there's other people that can do what I do. But for the fact that I'm the one that's publicly putting it out there, it now, it now associates. And also, one book that I should, I, I don't know if you've read this book, but one of the best books I have ever read. I do more audio books. One of the best books I have ever read is called The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. The 22, the, again, brother. the 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. It is the best book yes, sir. I have ever. Listen, it breaks down to you why Coca-Cola is number one or why, why this company... All right, for instance, prime example. When you think of ketchup, what brand do you think of? Heinz. Good old Heinz, mate. And when you, when you taste other ketchups, you, you'll compare it to Heinz. But Heinz is a company. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they baked beans, lentils, yeah, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm but so, because their branding has, they were the first to brand around tomato and they own it now. That mm. Heinz is what people compare to. So they say it's not about your product. What it's about is being first in the people's minds. Do you understand? That's why easily you can never talk about motion capture and not know Andy Circus. You can't. Really? Even though he weren't, he weren't, he didn't create it. He weren't the first to do it. He weren't the first to do motion capture, but he was the first to do it on such a massive scale that now, if you ever speak about motion capture, his name's associated to it. Do you understand? Michael Jordan basketball. <laughs> you can't. You can't say basketball. You, in fact, you can't even say probably. Sports and not, that's how big Michael Jordan is. Like that's basketball, true. yes, but sports in itself, you you can't not think about that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good you team can't team. think about you can't think about rap without thinking about particular, particular artists. So it's about being the first in the people's minds, not the first to do it, but first in the people's minds. Do you understand? And when you I'm look ordering at this, that book now on Amazon, twenty one. 20, 22 immutable laws of marketing yeah and then, talks, laws of and, it, marketing. and then it talks about if you're not the first then what you do is create a new category and be the first in it so yes andy circus might be the first person that people recognize with motion capture but who's the first woman who's the first indian wow first black do you understand because now that's the, another first do you understand what I'm saying? Come on so, now. You're, and so you now, now to, to, so it's the same thing, but the category mm -hmm. is different because it's a woman now. It's a mm -hmm. category is different because the race is different. Do you understand? So you create your own category to be first. So I know that a lot of people associate my name with motion capture, 
but I now have created a category where it's like the creature at motion capture. Like I'm, I, because I use that marketing to be like, okay, what can I do to get people to think about, I want to hire him. I don't think about, I don't think about how I can get them, uh, me emailing them like, please let me work. I think from the space of, I'm an asset. How can I make them want to come and invest in me? That's what right. Can do? What can I do? And that's what why I don't say. Mm. So when you think from those kind of aspects and those type of ways of thinking, bro, it's like it opens you up differently. And especially when it comes to being a creature, actor, there's a thing that I have to do beyond me understanding the psychology and the brain and stuff enables me to become my character even in death because I know psychologically, all right, if I was to perform as a character right now, I know that you know me as a human being. Like you're not, you're not going to see me as an animal or monkey. But what I do know, what I do know is that, is that, what I do know is that there's something about your brain, mm. that your brain is always trying to figure out things. Your brain is always trying to figure out things because it has to in order for it to survive. It needs mm -hmm. to know what's going on to feel safety, to feel comfortable. Comfortability means survival. That's why it always wants to get comfortable. So I know I can influence your brain to look at me different, and I know how mm -hmm. to do it. And that's becoming, when I become the creature, it's all about how I truly become and breathe and feel and move as it. And when I do it, your brain will subconsciously, it can't mm. help it, but think, what am I seeing there? What mm. am I really seeing there? And that's how you influence someone to believe in, you influence someone to believe in your character. Do you understand what I'm saying? Brother, so, one minute. I'm going to do a black car special thing for you right now. We always do it when we get things like this, brother. One second, sir. Oh, my days. Where is it? Where no is problem, it? bro. I'm coming back. Brother, I have to do this. I had to go all the way to the kitchen and splash up the lighter. Bruv, I had to. And as Connie said, you're dropping some heavenly gems. Not hella gems. Hev bruv. Bruv. Thank you. Seriously. And you know, I was just lining up a video. That's why you see my eye kind of move off a little bit. Because I was watching. Yeah. I want people to go on YouTube. Eight in uh, Tarzan, which was in 2016, 2017. Yeah. And the lion that goes up to Tarzan, how he caresses and how Tarzan embraces the lion. Guess who's playing the lion? <laughs> this man right here. This <laughs> man right here. So when man is just talking, listen, yeah. from, if you watch the top of this live here, from what the brother's gone through to where he is and where he put himself, and these ops known as Hanberry, or Hanberry, yeah? And the brother's still hair kicking knowledge? Yeah, man. Brother, I'm just sitting there, and I could sit here all night listening. Nah, I appreciate it. All appreciate night, brother, I thank you. And you there's know, a lot of comments as I, well. I wanna, I wanna, bro, there's so much that's coming to the forefront of my mind, bro. In terms of what you're saying, and... Brother, I'm going to let you wrap up and conclude the show because we're posting it on every yeah. platform. I want you to put your, tell us your, 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 your media handles, yeah, social media handles right now. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's all on you, bro. I mean, yeah. you go to YouTube and type in Tarzan. You'll see when my man, what's the name of the actor again? Now, the Skaz, Skaz, I know he's a Skazgard. Yeah, um, Ale 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 Alexander Skazgard. Alexander Skazgard. Bro, I'm, I'm t bro, I'm, Go on YouTube, listen, listen. Don't 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 listen yeah. to me, you know. Listen to this brother and go on yeah. YouTube and see how yeah. the brother works. First of all, I just want to say to everyone that's that's commented and stuff like, sorry that I haven't seen it and, and replied, but I appreciate the comments and, and everything like that. Cause my phone is not having it where I can see it easily. But yeah, man, that to, to uh, again again, courts, thank you, bro, for um having thank it you. like that. Thank you, my and, brother. I'm inspired. Yeah, Anyone to find me is just Ace Ruel on anything. A C E R U E L E. My first and middle name, Ace Ruel. 
So, and I'm going to say this. As Alexander Dumas said, the writer of The, uh, the Three Musketeers, a black man, a French writer of The Three Musketeers, Alexander Dumas, he said, he coined the frame, phrase, one for all and all for one. One for all and all for one. So what you go through, brother, we go through. So we, we're together. You keep us informed. Sorry, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. I'm just excited right now. Sorry. That's cool, man. Like, yeah, man. Just, yeah, if you, if you want to follow or so, you know, just Ace Ruel on anything. Ace Ruel, A-C-E-R-U-E-L-E. -E -E. Um, I'll I type it in A-C-E-R-U-E-L-E. -E -E. For anything, you can find it there. Twitter, uh, Insta, and um, LinkedIn. And then you can go com, and you can see, like, my stuff and what I do. So, yeah, man, like, again, it's just one of those things I just say to people, you know, like, I appreciate that my story's out there when it comes to the home office. And, again, like, speaking to you, you know, I, I, I can explain this where you can understand you know, and this is why I tell people, brother, this is why I tell people, you got to be careful what you ask for. You have to be careful what you ask for because I always ask, I always want to be in my own box. Do you understand what I'm saying? I always want to be in my own, you know, I, I'm, I'm the black guy that does the creature motion capture stuff. I'm, 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 I'm different from, you know, I always want to be. And guess what's that on a larger scale? The home office situation I'm in. It's the same thing but on a larger scale, I always want to be unique. I always want to be unique. Yeah, I want to be unique. I want to be in my own own situation. Mm. Because of that, I look at things, when I look at the home office situation, it's a real unique type of thing. Not to say that there's not anybody that's not going through the same thing, but even just the fact that everything is a collective, paperwork going missing, mm. no, isn't, you know, or the judge and then being born and grown here and everything like that. It's put me in a unique position with my case. Do you understand? Like there's, there's probably not a hundred people right now going through the exact same thing. Do you understand? Mm. Yeah, really, bro. The Windrush situation was uh, caused by, again, the Cambridge Mafia, AKA Tory party, the likes of so-called pretty, which part she pretty, pretty Patel, which part she pretty. Yeah, I said yeah. it. Yeah. One of their yeah. home secretaries. Um, or one of the secretaries, no, sec what's her position? Secretary of State. Well, she's in the Tory party and uh, I think foreign secretary. I'm not the best when it comes to politics, guys, so please forgive me. But yeah, she's an ops in this whole thing and um, they've deported many of our people, many African, Jam I'm using this term deliberately because there's a lot of divide and rule that we need to get rid of, neurologically speaking. Mm -hmm. Many African Jamaicans were deported back not Theresa May no well yeah Theresa May yes but pretty Patel so called pretty she's not pretty but she deported many of our African Jamaicans back to Jamaica Windrush generation that built this country since 1948 and before but on the record we built this country we helped build the London transport system in fact we did the, the NHS there would be I'm gonna say this so loud the NA, there would be no NHS if it weren't for the Windrush generation. I'm going to say it again. There would be no National Health Service were it not for the Caribbeans, Asian, Jamaican, everybody from the West Indies coming over here to build up the National Health Service. I'm say, I said it, and I'm never going to take that talk back. Never. Never. And to all of those from the motherland who are here now, who came just a little bit after the Windrush. We've always been there. Also, our brothers and sisters from the continent, they built up the NHS. I will never take that talk back. Mm. We've been, listen, oh, God. Bro, it's, 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 it's crazy, crazy man. You just, you just have to look at it as, in the scale of the grand scale of the universe, these are all little blips. On a human level, it seems big. But on a universal yeah, scale, it's, it's such a blip on a universal scale. When you look at when you look at life oh, yes. like when you look at life and you think about yeah, on a physical level as human society, these are massive things. But then when you look at the greater grand scheme of things, come on. All of these things are just blips. Blips. 
lit. I love that mentality, bro. So, brother, <laughs> as we conclude, tell us, can do you have any classes, online classes? We know where to come and support you on the social media handlers. Uh, um, anything that, what, what, what have you got planned right now in the grand scheme of things, in the universe things? Right now, <laughs> right now, the, the things that I've got doing, one, I've got one of my classes, this is for actors anyway, one of my yes. classes that are my creature classes where, you know, I've got like 12 pairs of arm extensions where people will learn how, so the stuff that you see at Planets of the Apes and you see how they move with the yes. arm stuff, I run a class like that and I'm the only person, there's only one other man in the world that runs that class in America. So I What's run a class. What's I run a class. Go ahead. His name's Terry Notary. He runs, he runs uh, the same type of class. He was the first to do it. He was. But then I, I, over here, over here in Europe, I'm the only person in Europe that runs the creature, mm -hmm. the creature class with the arm extension. So that's on, more for actors. And then the next step is we're going to move to having our own, you know, motion capture system and doing things, developing the animation company yeah. and team yeah that's 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 the the next step which, and you know you've got me for the voiceover stuff bruv anything you need bruv advert anything i'm here bruv you yeah, know because exactly. I'm, I'm working on a game right now i can't even it's big big but i can't even mention it as you know bruv the nda stuff we say yeah. but yes. i know there's a lot of motion capture and i'm i'm gonna actually speak to them and say look i've got my boy yeah. you know he does his thing man you need to but what uh, can you say what studio it's with can you say what studio it's with? Um, it's That's the studios. It's got the, the studios based in Soho, where they're recording the voice. The actual motion capture. Yeah. I, know, I know you're talking about. I know. Does, does the studio begin yeah. with? Does the studio uh, begin with M? Does it begin with M? What the title? Yeah, M. The studio. Well, there's two titles. One of them begins with P. But put it this way: it's gonna be. It's gonna be. We we talk. We're gonna talk over this, bro. Yeah. But yeah, but so advice to say, and, I and, know for a fact once they get the voice thing down, they're gonna want the motion picture actors coming in to do the yeah. movements. Yeah, and there's a lot oh. of I can't even speak on it, but there's yeah, yeah, don't don't bad, don't say that. Bro. It's so bad. I can't wait. Right, yeah. I can't wait, and I give thanks to God for it, bro. It's bad, and I know yeah, that bro. movements and in the script there's there's certain animals and creatures, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. So we've got a, yeah, we're going to talk off of this. We'll talk off of this anyway, bro. Yeah, no problem, man. And then, yeah, so that's it, really. Like, I don't, I don't, like, do anything in regards to the talks and the stuff that I do that way because, for me, that's not work. That's, like, that's, like, that's my heart. I, I believe everyone has to have a balance, you know? So we do something for our ego, and our ego is, you know, oh, as, a, as a performer, it feeds my ego. As a performer, yeah. Yeah, Let's not be around the bush. As a performer, it feeds our ego. That's uh, right. My heart, my heart based stuff is when I do the talks in the schools and when I, where, like, you know, talking with friends about stuff. So there's not, I, I'm never going to be like a class on how to transition from mentalism to here. I'm never going to do it because I don't associate that with money. You know, if someone asks me to yeah. come and talk, I'll come and talk. You understand? So yeah. in regards to like dropping gems and information, I don't do anything associated with money that, you know, if a school wants to pay me, then okay, but I wouldn't go, you know, I've been commissioned by police and everything to do stuff, but it's not, I don't, I don't contact schools like, hey, this is my plan. I would like this much. No, that's my hard work. Cause you have to do something where primary oh, school, like that. Yeah, the youngest primary school, I'm just gonna answer this question. The, the youngest I would do is yeah, year six because they will have a, 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 a quite understanding before anything below that maybe year five but year six is more they can understand certain things when I break things down because I have talks that the same talk but depending on the age it can be it can be more detailed or stuff like I've done talks for 60 year olds to to business entrepreneurs to come on high school to finish so it depends the crowd depending on how I shape the story. But, well, yeah, brother, but I'm yeah. working with a school, so I'm going to... There's ch These children are geniuses, bro. They have what society would say, ADHD, autism, but they pick things up, man. 
Yeah. They pick things up, especially they're learning physically. Hands, you know, there's different types of learning. They learn with movement. And what you are doing in terms of motion picture, they'll love it. So I'm going to be speaking with certain heads tomorrow regarding you. Yeah. If yeah. not, yeah. some kind of distance learning, if, you know, because some schools, they're not allowing people in, yeah. visitors in and whatnot. But we're going we're gonna to set something up, brother. And uh, Urban Goddess Re Evolution says, okay, I homeschool my son. is into yeah. animation. Make sure yeah, cool. Urban Goddess, you holler at Ace and message him directly, 100%. And that, anyone that's missed this show, just play it back to the beginning because to recap it, woo, yeah. man, yeah. there's some gems being dropped tonight. Yeah, anyway. we've actually been speaking for almost two hours. <laughs> I know, brother. You remember we said, listen, we're trying to keep it off for that 45 Five, minutes. 45. I lie, me, I tell you now. 45 minutes, yeah. no way. But you know when it's good, we just let it yeah. flow. I love it, bro. That's why I call it stop it, bro. I said, no, 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 no. We, sometimes we call it, but the universe calls it, and we have to just go with the universe, bro. Yeah, you know? man. Oh, yeah, man, I'm grateful, man. Thank you for having me, my bro. Brother, thank you. Know. And there's so much more, I know. So I feel yeah. we need to be on again and yeah, to, to stay up to date and speed with what's going on. And we need to, all the, to all our lawyers out there, to all the press, to all our journalists out there, to all of those who can help with this campaign, we want to make present this brother to you ace because we need to get this brother around in terms of the works that he's doing and we need to uh build up a ground swell of support for ace because it brother's going through this and he's shining but this thing happens to one it happens to all it can happen to anyone yeah mm. i'm not waiting for anyone for anything tragic to happen we rebuke that before we start coming out and marching no i'm about celebrating people's life now yeah? yeah, so this brother is a living testimony of what we need to do now, and it's a test to us to what we need to do. So, we need to um, support now, and we need to follow this brother, and we just show love to this brother by showing love to this brother. Then, I'm telling you, we can make magic happen. Yeah, of course. Other people, we come together, we make things happen. Ain't no yeah. spooky thing, it's real. Yeah, no, I, we I know make that. Things happen. Yeah. I know that. Spirit. I know that. that Trust me, I know, bro. African spirituality, bro. I believe in it. Yeah, it's that's not joking, fact. Not chicken, chicken head cut off and blood. No, no, no. Forget all that. See, that's what Hollywood wants us to believe about that thing. We're talking about ancient spiritual connection with the most, you know, mm. be you call him Allah, God, Jah, Jehovah, whatever. The energy, the, the, the universe and the uh, nature. We got that power. That's why Storm. She controls nature, a black woman, you know? Mm. They know what they're talking about in these comics. It's brilliant. And, brother, I want to big you up for coming on our platform. This is going out everywhere. Thank you, brother. You taught me tonight, and I've, I've felt so inspired, man. That's John Thank Muhammad. You. John Muhammad, big up. I'm Thank telling you, you I'm so inspired. John Muhammad is a great mind like yourself. He's a CEO. He, he's just multi-talented. And he was, brother, when I spoke to him about you today, he's like, nah, man, we... This brother's great. He saw some of your work, so he said, he's great. And John is a good judge of character. He's a good reader of energy. And he read your energy. He said, nah, this brother's on to some. Brother, you're a winner already, man. And we speak Thank that into existence. We have fire bun pun Hanbury. Fire bun <laughs> ancestors. <laughs> Listen, ancestors are here, bro. They're here. Oh, yeah. One flame you, start an inferno. See it there? So Thank ancestors you, are with us. They're with you, bro. So, yeah, man. Thank you. Love all the time. I'm going to be in touch with you. We're going to talk, yeah? And we're yeah. going to bring you back on as well. Yeah, all yeah, right, cool. you. yeah, man. Definitely. Bless you, bro. You're family for me, brother. I love yeah. you, man. Thank yeah. you. Love. Blessing. Thank you, brother. That was Ace Real. Ace Real. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And don't go right yet. Don't go right yet. People, remember 22. Oh, I've got to get the name of that book. 22. Immutable Laws of Marketing, as recommended by the one and only AC Rule. 22 Immutable Laws. The thing is only about $2.99. $2.99. Get that book because everyone needs to market themselves. And I'm going to say this, and I just want to speak specifically to, to the black communities, just specifically, not excluding anyone, because this is a platform for all of us as human beings, but specifically to the black community. We have to start thinking about our ethnic, I hate that word, 
we have to start looking at our brand and how we push ourselves. Our public image. What is our public image? What's the public image of our young boys, especially our young boys? We have to start changing and challenging that. Changing and challenging. Because I said to a group of young boys, the first, your media is how you dress and how you carry yourself. Your media is how you dress and how you carry yourself. And as, AC, uh, as Ace was breaking down, it's about how you market yourself. It's about the neural learning, the neural practices, the neural marketing. We've got to change our thinking, people. But definitely get this book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. Big book. I'm going to order mine on Amazon. Yeah, go and order that. Yes. And also, I recommend this. Yo, word magic. Understand words, man. Don't think you can over... Listen, if you're going to overcome the system, you've got to understand the language. Overcome the system, overcome the language. Overcome the language, overcome the system. I'm loving this book. It breaks down these words, man. Why is it that we call the word gospel derived from the old English God spell? Gospel music. Gospel derived from the old English God spell. God good and spell. Story, message. We call it gospel music. It goes into origins of words. You've got to understand. That way you won't be intimidated by letters. You won't, because you get, you get an understanding. Yeah? And you'll be so careful what you watch and listen to. But listen, this show where it's dedicated to supporting our brother, our friend, actor, who has appeared in Brotherhood, EastEnders, and so many other shows. Tarzan, don't look at his IMDb. We've got to support him. We've got to support him. Thank you very much, Urban Goddess. Thank you very much, Connie. Thank you very much for everyone on this platform. Please go and follow Ace Rule. Ace Rule. Go and support. Show love. Yeah, this is the UK family, yeah? We've got to show love to each other, man. We must start loving on each other. This man is a motion capture reel, yeah? A motion capture reel, yeah? Let's start pumping in support into their community, into the human family, into our community locally, regionally, nationally, and globally. Globally. Locally, regionally, nationally, and globally. Let's start first loving on ourselves and loving on everyone else. Yeah? And we must do that. Let's, let's follow the brother right now. Follow him. Show love and support. And we're going to bring him back on for a part two because, trust me, that was just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to order my book right now. And I'm going to have a little Sunday uh, drink. And also... Eid Mubarak to the Muslims, blessed Ramadan, fasting is great, regardless of your religion, regardless of your religious persuasion, fasting is brilliant. And, yes, I always finish, finish off with words of the week. I just say what we will say. Whatever you resist, will persist. Whatever you resist, will persist. Notice that AC wasn't Talking too much about, yeah, we got, yeah, that judge. No, you notice his energy is very calm because he's on his focus. So whatever you don't like, whatever you're not on in terms of the energy, be careful where you place your energy. Put your energy on what you want as opposed to what you don't want. Put your energy on what you want as opposed to what you don't want. Too much, it's easy to complain. Oh, this ain't happening. The white man, the black man, uh, so every... You don't want it, don't talk about it. Talk about what you do want. Okay, what's the solution? What's the solution? Yeah, but this and that. Uh, yo, I'm not a victim. You're not a victim. We're not victims. We're victors. What you saw with Ace is victory. Do your victory lap now because you're celebrating before it happens. I'm going to say it again. Do your victory lap now because you're celebrating before it happens. Get into that. We have to all, all of us, me included, I remind myself, Let's get into that winning mindset. We're not victims. We're not vic I'm tired of it. We're not victims. We're not victims. Word magic. We're not vi We're victorious. In my heart, in my head, I'm doing my victory lap. So are you. We're not victims. Oh, please help us. We no. 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 Manifestation, Anthony Black Magic. And his name is Anthony Black Magic. Love that. Black. And magic. I'm a black man doing the magic. Yeah? 
the, 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 yeah, the news, don't be inundated with too much news. Watch what you need to watch and keep it moving. Don't worry about, look, what did the brother say about your immunity? Your body, and a friend of mine said to, uh, a colleague of mine who's from Eastern Europe said this to me. No doctor in the world is more intelligent than your immune system. I'm going to say that again. No doctor in the world is more intelligent than your immune system. Your immunity needs sunlight, uh, air, good food, relaxation, sleep, and exercise. Help our immune system first. Your, no one's more intelligent than your immune system. Your immune system, which is your DNA and everything else, is ageless. It's ageless. So why is some Johnny come lately going to tell you what to do with your immunity? Yeah? If you do what you need to do, but me, I'm going to trust in my immune system. Yeah? Which is older than any doctor on this planet. I want you to think about that. Get that book. I'm going to purchase it right now. Manifestation, that's what we want. Focus on what you want. Don't focus on what's going on in the world. That will take you off sometimes. You got, yeah, know what's going on, but focus on what you're all about. John, we've got to bring you on so we can talk about this cryptocurrency craze. This cryptocurrency craze. Everybody, do me a favor before I go. Please, <laughs> what's that? Please um, follow us on Black Film Institute because we're going big with this. Black Film Institute on YouTube. Please follow us, subscribe, Black Film Institute. Put this video out on all different platforms because this was great. I'm going to watch it again. Put this video out on all various different platforms. Black Film Institute. Watch this uh, 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 platform here. Black Film Institute, YouTube, and Instagram. Follow, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, share it with your enemies, share it. Share it all around. And we'll see you next week with a very another special guest. Big up yourselves. Yeah, man. Bless up, yeah? Peace.